Hello, this is astrologer coach Sonia Francis and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming new moon in almost 13 degrees of Cancer, which will be exact on July 4th on a holiday in the United States at 7.01 a.m. East Coast time in the U.S., which is also New York time, and 4.01 a.m. Pacific time, which is uh, the West Coast in the U.S., and which is also L.A. time. Now, a new moon is always the beginning of a new moon cycle, and it's a good time to go within and seed anything we would like to connect with for the next 28 days, the duration of that lunar cycle. And we will talk about the best and most potent times to set new moon intentions towards the end of this video, so stay tuned. But first, I want to talk about the new moon energy in Cancer. So Cancer being a very protective and introverted energy always looks to surround itself with quality, safety, and whatever is familiar, right? So for these next 28 days, we're definitely going to be um, experiencing life on a deeper, more instinctual level, more connected to our feelings, and wanting to feel safe within our foundations, right? Now, Cancer is a water sign, and the ancient element of water is just as essential to our spiritual survival as the actual water is to our physical bodies, right? Now, water is more important than food even for us to, to survive on a physical level, right? So it's really water symbolizes feelings in the ancient times, right? So it's really our feeling body is just as essential to us as water would be to our um, our physical bodies. And what we know from babies, for example, is that when babies are not being held and when their feelings are not being acknowledged and uh, being when they're not being nurtured, that uh, they die, right? So actually, uh, you know, even... Besides food, what's really important is this uh, acknowledging and nurturing of feelings that's, that's really uh, essential to our survival as well. And so like actual water, when emotional water gets stagnant or, um, you know, just kind of like doesn't move at all as not being acknowledged, then that can cause disease and what this is, right? Uh, and and when, we, when we have feelings that we suppress or feelings that don't flow or that kind of dam up, you know, life continues at a very low vibrational setting when we do that. So cancer being the first water sign of the zodiac is very much related to the development of our emotional body in a healthy way. And this is something that happens at a very early age. So depending on your conditioning and your upbringing and your, your family of origin, you know, how they dealt with feelings and how they uh, dealt with you in relationship to your feelings, that will be a very uh, uh, strong message to how you are actually dealing with your feelings now as well. And so the new moon really gives us the opportunity here to deepen our understanding of our emotional nature and our needs. Um, and, you know, some very basic needs that we all have as human beings is, you know, water, food, rest, nurturing, affection, uh, foundation for physical and emotional safety, you know, wanting to feel connected, you know, wanting to also feel separate sometimes, you know, wanting to uh, be loved and approved of, wanting to feel like we're in control, like we're, we're, we're capable, you know, of doing things on our own. So these are all uh, very basic needs that most um, human beings have. And so in order for us to really know what we're needing and what we're feeling in the moment, we need to be in touch with our feeling nature. And of course, our feeling nature is something that really has been denied and suppressed for centuries now, for a very, very long time, like especially in the Western world where, you know, where most of us live, that possibly listen to this video, um, we have really been not been very deeply connected to our feeling nature. 
And so we've just started to uh, reconnect with our feelings a little bit more since Neptune has moved into Pisces in 2012. And so, you know, we have begun to embrace it a little bit more fully now. And, you know, we've, we've sort of gotten the sense that feelings are really an essential source of information for us. And when we listen to them and when we, when we learn about our true needs, that that's very healthy for us. That's a healthy way of, of connecting to ourselves and to others. And when we don't do that, then we become dependent on other people and not just for validation and direction in the world, but also, uh, you know, sometimes we get dependent on, things like uh, like addictive behaviors you know um or distractions that we that we make for ourselves so that we don't need to feel what we're feeling now mercury and venus is also in cancer at the time of the new moon they're making a very close alignment with the new moon and neptune in pisces trines the new moon so all of this really underscores the message that we need to get more connected to our feelings and needs and our sense of inner safety, stability, our foundations that we have. You know, we need to really understand what they are. And we're really also with this Neptune trine, we're invited to trust and flow with the energy currents that are that are coming up, that we're feeling, that we're sensing, rather than struggling against them. And we're invited to release past memories or conditioning, in particular unhealthy stuff that's that's been happening in the realm of feelings and emotions and intuition that no longer serves us, you know, things that uh, really keep us on a lower vibrational uh, level, that keep us in this place where we feel a little bit, uh, you know, like, less good about ourselves so these are the kind of things like anything unhealthy that we've learned or that we've observed you know from our families or or you know siblings or parents you know that we that we just allow that to to dissolve and let it go now uh, questions that you can ask yourself in relationship to this is what have you learned about your relationship to the emotional body these past two to four years Right, because that's really been the time since Neptune has moved into Pisces, you know, where we've we've sort of like gotten a little bit more in touch with our emotional body. So, what have you learned about that relationship, and where could you go even deeper, be more present, listen more intently to our, to your feeling body, right? And and what's your relationship to your feminine receptive energies, right? Because Cancer is one of the most feminine receptive energies there are. So what is your relationship to that energy? And is there room for more integration in your life? Because, you know, sometimes we feel more comfortable with certain energies than we do with others. And some of us might feel very uncomfortable with the feminine receptive energy. So if that's the case, you know, it, could you integrate that energy a little, just a little bit more? You know, and what baby steps could you take to make this happen, right? And, uh, you know, I say baby steps here because cancer is all about safety, right? And so baby steps are less scary. You know, with cancer, we want to be protective. We want to connect to the familiar, something that, that's not threatening to us, right? So when we take baby steps, that's a little bit less threatening. And it's, it's a little bit, it feels a little bit less uncomfortable than taking big leaps forward, for example, right? So just stick with baby steps for the next 28 days, right? How can you move a little bit closer to an integration of that feminine receptive energy? Now, all the questions of this video, as always, they're, they're available on my website at astrologercoach.com via my weekly forecasts after July 3rd. So you can also sign up for them uh, and receive them via email uh, at that time. So just email us at info at astrologercoach.com and just write weekly forecasts in the subject line. I just wanted to mention that real quick before we go back to the new moon so you know that that's available. But... Uh, Another thing that's connected to this new moon is Pluto. Pluto in Capricorn opposes the new moon and Mercury in giving us the message to dig deeper into our feeling body and allow 
old fears and suppressed feelings to come to the surface so we can deal with them more consciously and embrace them more fully. And this is very healthy. This is a very, can be a very intense process, but it's a very healthy process. And this could also show up in interactions with other people because it's an opposition. So very often opposition get played out with us and somebody in the outside world, conversations with others, uh, and so on. But so just allow whatever shows up and comes up to come up because it's it's valuable you know see it as a gift to you um you know that 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 helps you to finally look at something that you haven't dealt with for a very long time or that you have suppressed for a very long time or be scared to deal with for a very long time and the question you can ask yourself here with this pluto opposition is what is draining your life force because you're afraid to face it or embrace it or something that you're defending against out of fear or um, out of a, a past trauma that you've experienced um, in your life. So really just ask yourself that question. Again, with my questions, you can just sit with them. You don't have to answer them right away. You can meditate on them. You can journal on them. You can just marinate with them and just keep them in your consciousness for the next 28 days and then just see what shows up in relationship to those questions, right? That's a really great way of dealing with these questions. Now, with Pluto, of course, true empowerment comes from being emotionally authentic and passionate about who we are and what we do. In particular, of course, what we do with Pluto in Capricorn, right? And this can only be achieved when we're willing to feel our feelings and simultaneously keep our hearts wide open while we feel what we're feeling. Right. And so in particular, of course, this is uh, related to any feelings that are uncomfortable or that we're uncomfortable with, because usually the higher vibrational feelings like love and fun and excitement, they're easy to be with, you know, and, and um, you know, most of us, I shouldn't say everybody, but most of us have an easy time being with the higher vibrational feelings. And if you have a difficult time with those as well, then just Keep opening your heart a little bit more and allow yourself to be present to all of the feelings of the universe, you know, higher, lower, middle vibration, whatever it is, you know, lower vibrational stuff like anger, grief, sadness, upset, you know, those are valuable feelings because all of them are messages for us. And so it's really important for us to stay open and allowing ourselves to feel what the message is underneath the feeling that we're having. Right. And we can only hear the message by being present with the feeling. Right. When we project the root course of our feelings onto others by blaming or accusing them or blaming or accusing life. Right. That does not work long term. That really gives our power away. You know, we're giving our own power away to other people or to the outside world. And at the same time, you know, also refusing to feel our feelings, that's also not healthy. You know, that's also not going to work long term. Trying to intellectualize our feelings, you know, is also not going to work uh, long term, right? It's it's just intellectualizing our feelings is just a way of uh, kind of escaping from our feelings, not wanting to be with them. So we're trying to understand them. We're trying to analyze, you know, what they are, where they come from, where are we going to go from here, you know. But that's really just an escape of, of actually being present with what you're feeling and listening to the, to the message underneath the feeling itself. And so, you know, the messages that we received at a very early age, you know, from our family, um, from our upbringing, the way we were conditioned, that can really tell us a lot about how we deal with our feelings now. Right. So just kind of take a look at that, um, you know, look to see how did your parents deal with their feelings and how did that impact you? How did they deal with you, with your feelings? How did that impact you? And just curiously take a look at that and just to see it for what it is. Love it, accept it, you know, be with it. You know, one of the things you can ask yourself here is how am I handling my feelings, my needs and my family relations, you know, because all of that is very much connected to our early conditioning, right? And, you know, of course, Chiron and Mars are still stationing right now as well. 
And so healing our feelings, especially feelings around anger, uh, is going to be very important still. And we've already talked about this because this has been very prominent for the last two weeks. So feel free to watch my last full moon video for more information about those stations, right? Um, but for the next two weeks, you know, just observe what feels empowering, what feels uplifting. Uh, or what feels disempowering, what feels draining to you, to your energies, right? To your feeling body. And uh, some other questions you can also ask yourself with this Pluto Cancer opposition. You know, what does emotional maturity mean to me? You know, since Cancer is the, the first sign of the water signs where we're developing uh, the emotional body, right? Uh, what does emotional maturity mean to me and how would I define it, you know, and how would I know when I have it? These are some really great questions to just kind of be with as well, right, for the next uh, two weeks at least. Uh, and, you know, Pluto in Capricorn is really all about taking responsibility for how we show up in the world, right? And Cancer, of course, which is on the opposite side, is about needing to first take a look to see how we connect on an emotional level to ourselves and to life, you know, we have how we've learned to deal with our feelings, you know, before before we even show up in the world as a responsible, passionate, authentic human being. We need to know, you know, how do I deal with my feelings? You know, how do I listen to my feelings or not? Right. So this this is really important stuff. Uh, very basic, very very foundational stuff. It's a it's a foundational issue, right? Uh, now another part of this new moon is an in conjunct between Mercury in Cancer and Saturn in Sagittarius, uh, which is almost exact at the time of the new moon. And so this is asking us um, to use our time wisely for the next two weeks, right? And to also develop our inner observer. And so. Um, the reason why, why, why this is important is because we really want to be able to see, like, as we're observing, you know, we, we get to understand a little bit better what needs adjusting or what needs changing for us right now, right? So for the next two weeks, um, you know, our goals may require a little bit more effort, a little bit more time than we realize going into them. And this can really impact our health if we're not pacing ourselves um, you know, a little bit at a, at a, at a healthy pace, if we're not, uh, you know, uh, going after our goals at a healthy pace. And so if we break our projects down into small junks, like actual action steps, and tackle those simple achievable actions one at a time, you know, just, just really focusing on one action at a time, and, and doing just one little thing at a time, baby steps, right? Um, we can move forward towards our goals without feeling overwhelmed and with our health still intact, right? And this is going to be very important for the next two weeks to four weeks. And so one way to do this is to really look at the project and ask ourselves, how? You know, just ask that a few times in a row. How? How do I get to that goal, right? So if you have a, a project or a goal that you're doing, you know, how? How do I get there? How do I do this, right? And until you get to something, you keep asking these questions until you actually get to something that you can actually do right in this moment. So a simple, easy action step that you can take right away, something that doesn't take up a lot of your time, a lot of your energy, a lot of effort, you can start, right? So sort of like a starting point. And, you know, breaking complex projects down into simple little action steps like that really reduces mental and physical stress. And this is going to be very helpful for all that cancer energy that really requires, you know, a little bit of a gentler approach to, towards ourselves, right? Now, we also have a grand trine happening at the time of the new moon in the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces for the next four weeks. And so, of course, we already talked about, you know, Mercury, the Sun, the Moon, and Venus being in Cancer. Mars is in Scorpio, and Neptune and Chiron are in Pisces. So this really supports deeper emotional connections, both to ourselves and other people. And it also helps our personal and collective healing process, right? And, and so we're really being invited to bring more compassion, acceptance, love to our journey 
uh, that we're on on a collective level, on a personal level right now. You know, there's been so much going on in the world, you know, that that requires healing, especially in relationship to anger and aggression and violence, you know, and as we become more open to feeling our feelings and allowing everything that shows up to be okay, accepting them for what they are, which is messengers, we're going to really uh, uh, experience more of a healing around all of this, right? And for those of you who want to have a better understanding of your personal healing journey, you know, feel free to get the recording of my recent Chiron lecture, which is called Healing with Astrology. And it comes with a lot of handouts and stuff, and you can do your own work on your own chart. It's really fantastic. Feel free to check that out on my website at astrologycoach.com if you're interested in something like that, all right? Now, to go back to our feeling body, you know, feelings really give us information about our needs and our level of connection to ourselves and others, and they really show us how aligned or misaligned we are with ourselves and our world. So feeling our feelings, honoring them, and bringing um, and being also very gentle and nurturing with them. That is very important, just like you would be with a baby, right? Uh, because the you know feelings come from a very, very young age. They are pre-verbal, right? Feelings. So we need to treat our feelings in a very, very gentle way, allowing these feelings to just be there, you know, that can really strengthen our relationship with ourselves and ultimately with the outside world. Because, you know, as we're stronger within ourselves, we're also stronger uh, in the outside world. So uh, again, you know, there's more questions that you can ask yourselves and sit with and meditate with and, and marinate with. Uh, and one of those questions would be, how well do you care for your body, your mind, your soul? And, you know, caring, you know, that nurturing, caring, that's definitely, that's the cancer energy, right? And what percentage of your day or your week goes towards nurturing yourself, you know, and really look at that, be honest with yourself here, you know, to really see, you know, how well do you do with caring for yourself and nurturing yourself? And, you know, what might be possible if you spend 5% more time on self-care every day what might be possible you know and and again you know that five percent it's just taking that baby step right you know just allowing yourself to go a little bit more towards that self-care and and connecting with your feeling body right now finally i just want to say you know this new moon reminds us that you know when we slow down when we take time for ourselves and when we, when we explore our inner life, which all of that is connected to the water element, right? We can more clearly hear the voice of our inner guidance. And this is important, you know, our inner guidance is very subtle. We don't, if we don't slow down, it's very difficult to hear that inner intuitive voice. And that inner intuitive voice is our inner compass, you know, and our inner compass will never steer us wrong once we know how to read it, once we know how to connect to it, right? So you can ask yourself, you know, what simple baby steps could I take towards being a better reader of my own inner compass? And that's a really, really great question for the next 28 days, right? And so as best you can, you know, nurture yourself daily, be a healthy parent, to your inner baby, to that pre-verbal place within yourself. Be your own best friend. You know, that friend who supports you no matter what shows up, always has something supportive to give to you, to say to you, you know, that kind of a friend, right? And, you know, just remember the world really needs people that know how to nurture themselves and who honor their feeling body. We need people who have a healthy center and an inner compass that they follow. And so if you have an ascendant or any personal planets in 11 to 15 degrees of Cancer, Aries, Libra, or Capricorn, 
then this new moon is definitely going to be more impacting you personally. But even if you don't have personal planets in those degrees and sign, the house placement in your natal chart, in your birth chart, affected by this new moon is equally as important to take a look at. So take a look at your birth chart and just see which area of life is uh, is up for uh you know needing more more nurturing and more of an attention for the next two weeks in terms of the feeling body look to see where is 13 degrees of cancer in your breast chart and what does that house and that area of your life mean how can you nurture yourself more in that area of your life right and if you don't know what I'm talking about here, how to do that, and if you do, or if you don't have a birth chart even, right, then feel free to watch my How to Read Your Birth Chart video that is available on YouTube or on my website. But if you can't find it, just email us at info at astrologicalcoach.com and just write recording in the subject line, and my assistant will email you a high-res version of that recording with a lot of handouts. And well, not a lot with some handouts, I should say. And um, it will also that video will also tell you how you can get your own birth chart and how you can apply all of my videos and all of my weekly forecasts, you know, with your birth chart. So this is a really great video to watch if you haven't seen it yet. And it's also a great video to watch before you join my monthly forecasting forum uh, because we will be using our birth charts actively in the forum. We will look to see how the upcoming energies impact us personally by looking at where these energy patterns land in our birth charts. So watching that video is going to be very helpful before you join the, the forecasting forum, the monthly forecasting forum, which brings me to my next announcement before we talk about setting intentions. So just stay tuned for another brief second, very briefly. The next monthly forecasting forum, will, which is a 90-minute webinar, by the way, will be on Wednesday, July 20th at 3 p.m. Pacific time, LA time, 6 p.m. Eastern time, which is New York time, and 11 p.m. Uh, 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 British summertime, which is London time. So if you like to get in alignment with what's coming up in August, you know, sign up to join the webinar live, or you can also register to receive an MP4 recording within 24 hours of the live event. And, you know, really, other than booking a reading with me one-on-one, -on -one, this is the maximum level of support I offer, and it's really only $24 for the 90 minutes. So it's a really great value. If you feel that you can't afford the one-on-one -on -one readings just yet, and you want to connect with me and get some answers, um, this is really the way to go, you know. And I wanted to make this available for everybody so you can have an inexpensive way of connecting with me, connecting with the upcoming energies out there, and understanding them a little bit better in your own birth chart as well. So you can register right now if you like. If you just go to my website at astrologicalcoach.com and just click on the link below the video of Saturn in Sagittarius on my website there, you know, then it will it will bring you to the monthly forecasting forum page on my website. And on that page, you can make your payment for the forum and you can also fill out an online form at the very bottom of that page. And um, that form is great to, first of all, to let me know if you're going to be joining live or if you want to watch it just as a recording. And then also you can ask questions in advance so that if you, for example, if you want to watch it as a recording, you can already ask a question that then I will answer in the webinar as best as I can. And so then when you watch it as a recording, you'll have your questions answered, right? So it's really great that way. Now, um, let's talk about our new moon intentions, right? So new moon intentions. So we're setting some powerful intentions for this, moon, for this new moon cycle. And the best time to do that is after the new moon becomes exact. And we want to avoid moon void, of course, phases. Those are not the best time to set intentions. So this month, the best and most potent time to set intentions would be any time between 7.01 a.m. on July 4th until 2.29 a.m. Um, on Monday night, Tuesday, very early morning on July 5th, right? And so this is New York time, by the way. And then again, after the moon void, of course, um, has ended from July 5th at 12.28 p.m. until Wednesday, July 6th at 7 a.m. 
Eastern time, New York time. So if you live in a different time zone than New York time, then feel free to just plug in the New York time zone into a time zone converter, which you can find on the internet if you search it in the Google section. And if that's a little bit too uh, complicated for you, then feel free to just join me on my Facebook fan page or my Twitter page. And I will be posting when the most potent time is several times. And then you can just set your intentions at the time when you read those posts. All right. Now for more information about setting new moon intentions, feel free to go to my Facebook fan page and check out the notes sections from your computer. Um, I will also try and post that particular article on my page uh, as we're getting closer to the new moon so you can also access it via your iPhone and your Android phones as well. Now again, all the questions from this video are also available on my website at astrologicoach.com via my weekly forecast after July 3rd or you can also sign up for my weekly forecast and receive them via email on July 3rd um, by emailing us at info at astrologercoach.com and put the subject line weekly forecasts in, in the subject line. Um, and my assistant will add you to that particular mailing list and then you'll receive emails uh, every Sunday evening uh, for those weekly forecasts. And if you don't want to receive them and you just want to sign up for my newsletter, which I send out twice a month, that's available too. And my newsletter is basically, you know, my, my, my bi-monthly videos around the time of the new moon and the full moon, uh, special offers that I have for you guys, and then also announcements that I make about courses or events that I have. Uh, so feel free to stay in touch with me via the newsletter as well. You can also sign up for both and just write newsletter uh, or weekly forecast or both in the subject line, okay, when you send it to info at astrologicoach.com. All right, so that's it for this new moon. Um, if you have any general questions, I'm always happy to answer general questions. Email me at sonia at astrologercoach.com. That's S-O-N-J-A at astrologercoach.com. Um, if it's something personal that I can't answer without taking a look at your birth chart, I will ask you to either book a one-on-one -on -one reading with me or to join the monthly forecasting forum. And then that way you can get your personal questions answered uh, and you can access both of those things via my website at astrologercoach.com. All right, I hope this makes sense. Have a fantastic new moon. Remember, it's an introverted time. It's a time where we go within and tap into what we want to connect with for the next 28 days on a feeling level and on an emotional nurturing level. All right, have a good one. This is astrologer coach Sonia Francis. Goodbye.